Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. Joining us this morning is Rebecca Case, the funeral director and manager at Case Funeral Homes. Thank you so much for being here. How are you, Rebecca? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Of course, we are so delighted that you're here because this is a topic that is so pertinent and we all need this information. So today we are talking about burials and cremations, all the options that are available. So tell us a little bit about those options, Rebecca. Well, Michigan has four recognized types of disposition or options for you. And the first one would be earth burial, which mm. is more or less the traditional option. Entombment in a mausoleum or mm. crypt cremation and anatomical donation or donation to science for scientific study. Wow, I did not know there are so many options. That's great information there. So what would be something that's eco-friendly, some eco-friendly options, Rebecca? Well, a lot of people think of cremation yeah. as an eco-friendly option, and then there is some more upcoming options uh, that aren't quite necessarily recognized by the state yet. Things like people have read a human composting in the state of Washington has mm. recently come out and then flameless cremation is also supposed to have a really eco-friendly footprint yeah. and then there's also um, eco-friendly cemeteries where uh, no embalming chemicals are allowed so we're, we're trying to keep everything as green as possible. Wow those are excellent options to keep uh, yeah. help mother earth. Also Rebecca so why do people choose to be cremated. I know a lot of people have that question. Why would someone say, okay, I want my family member cremated? Right. So there's a lot of factors that go into any choice with disposition. Um, obviously, there's a financial component to any decision a family makes. And then there's religious components as well. Some faiths do prefer cremation mm. over burial or other types of disposition. And then cremation also offers a lot of flexibility for families. Uh, with remains that you can take with you, you can take a tangible piece of your loved one with you wherever you go, which is especially important with our mobile society today. Yeah, it is, that, definitely. When you're doing a cremation, if, if that's the option that a family chooses, can you still have an open casket as well? Oh, yes. You okay. can have any sort of services that you would like, and we can always tailor to families' needs. So we do all sorts of combinations. Um, sometimes it's a private family viewing, right. and then sometimes we have a public viewing, and then maybe a memorial service down the road. There's, there's so, so many options. Wow. Okay, so Rebecca, what would you say? So what is required if a family chooses cremation? So when a family chooses cremation, we have to make sure all of the wonderful legality steps are in place. The family's got to certify or sign it. Next of kin has to authorize cremation because it is irreversible. Mm. And then we have to have a cause of death by a physician, which has then gone over by the medical examiner from the whatever county the person has passed away in. And what the medical examiner is doing is doing the double checks with the medical community. And then we can go forward with the cremation when the family's ready. So that might be after a funeral. It might be before service. It might be some different combination thereof. So if a family chooses cremation, what can they do with the ashes? There's so many options. Wow. I usually say you name it and dream it. It's most likely possible. We might yeah. have to find a little research to make it happen. Um, the most common is urns, placing mm. the remains in an urn. And there's, you know, those come in every color, shape, size, idea that you can dream of. Uh, you can bury the remains at a cemetery or a mausoleum as well. There's different companies that allow you for water burial or scattering uh, in either the Great Lakes or the ocean. A lot of national parks actually now have scatter gardens that you can apply for a permit oh, wow. and leave your loved one in their favorite national park. Uh, different jewelry options. I mean, it's, it's truly endless and new options are coming out every day. And I love that because you are taking your loved one back to a place where they love and enjoy. So that's a great <laughs> option to have. Rebecca, how, on average, how long does it take people to actually receive those remains? The short answer to that is anywhere from a couple of days to maybe a long week. Mm. With the paperwork involved and with getting physicians to sign and medical examiner approval, sometimes that takes a couple of days. Um, which I know the Hollywood movies make you think it's instantaneous, yes. but yeah, <laughs> it, it does take a, it's 
usually on average a couple of days to a week. Okay, anything else you want people to know, Rebecca, about their options at all? There's so many out there and we can really truly customize and tailor services yeah. to each family's unique needs and financial constraints. And so I would always recommend talking with your local funeral director or coming to see us here at Cases and, and ask your questions, get the information you need, and, and we can truly help you figure out what's best for your family. Rebecca, thank you so much for bringing us this information, these options, because you really did give me and I'm sure a lot of people out there a peace of mind to know that your loved one will be happy after life. Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. If you'd like any more information, you can head on over to the hot link section of WNEM.com.